this evening and uh, I have a slightly slower encounter uh, as has been requested by the fans um, uh, and I'm going to be playing some five minutes plus two seconds a move uh, against my good friend Amit 100 uh, who is English international master Amit Ghazi and uh, oh he just says hello to me I'm going to say hello just typing that into the chat window Ooh. or something that vaguely resembles hello uh, and yeah uh, I believe he uh, came second at the British Rapid Play Championship this weekend for the second year running so uh, he is definitely no slouch uh, when it comes to these fast time controls um, so gonna have to see if I can catch him off guard in one way or another now the idea behind this slightly slower time control is that hopefully we won't descend into complete chaos at least not uh, for the first couple of minutes and there should be a little bit more time for me to explain some of my thought processes so we have an interesting sideline of the uh, Roy Lopez at the moment where my opponents played this early knight g7 idea which I'm not all that familiar with so I'm going to respond with a very safe option just playing this c3 line going to support d4 um, and one possibility here is black could play g6 and then I can go d5 and swap off these uh, light squared bishops kind of a little bit similar to uh, the Kawana game that we were analyzing a few minutes ago on the uh, Tashkent Grand Prix highlights uh, that was with uh, Yermolinsky and Simon Williams and uh, I managed to catch the end of that and it was I really enjoyed that as well so uh, maybe some of you guys will uh, will have been seeing that as well now okay so I could go d5 knight b8 take on d7 and then knight takes but then where am I going to develop the rest of my pieces maybe c4 uh, okay I actually don't tend to play this way all that much in over the board games um, because I, I'm not all that familiar with this pawn structure but maybe this will just give me an opportunity to actually learn something about it so I'm willing to give it a try because what we often get here after say castles bishop takes d7 knight takes d7 is some sort of um, what's the word? It's like a King's Indian pawn structure, but without the dark squared bishops. Sorry, without the light squared bishops here. Now, that makes it a little bit harder for him to play f5, because maybe knight g5 is more of an issue. I'd like to play b4 here, but then a3 is a bit scary. Uh, knight e1 to d3? Is that supposed to be one of the big moves here? Okay, can I go bishop e3? Bishop e3, f5, knight g5, I think is in my favour. I really want to find time to go b4. Okay, his idea is to go f5 without allowing knight g5. So I'm going to bring the knight back to e1 now that it can't go there. And me f5 with f3. And then bring my knight from e1 to d3. Well, this kind of almost looks very, very sensible. Which is interesting because uh, I have to tell you that I don't think either of us have all that much experience in this kind of middle game. Uh, but of course... Uh, we will have seen other players play this way before. So my knight does make its way to d3. And now the question is, will my opponent play f4 and go for this kingside attack? Looks like that's what he's going to go for. But he does risk me getting quite a lot of powerful play with a quick c5 here. Now, is that going to be in my favour? Well, I'm going to play c5. I have some ideas about queen b3 as well here. Possibly tied into a knight takes e5 tactics? Possibly not. Now, h5 seems his most natural move, and that is indeed what Amit decides to play. I am already falling behind on the clock, so I have to keep a close eye on that. Queen b3, rook b8, knight e5, followed by d6. Oh, I don't know. Uh, it looks like it might be fun. Okay, we're just going to play it, I think. Maybe he'll uh, simply not defend this pawn on b7. I am not sure. By the way, do let us know what you think of the uh, of this time control. Um, is a little bit slower than what we, we normally do. 
After this mini-match, we will be returning back to 3-Minute. Okay, he's gone Night G6, so he's offering me the B7 pawn for free and saying he's just going to mate me with G4. Well, uh, I think we're playing under a gentleman's agreement. We've got to take pawns like the, the one available on B7. Just going to have to take that one off, I'm afraid. And go, are you really mating me after G4? And uh, the honest answer is, I have no idea whether he's mating me after G4, but I'm kind of hoping not. So we take on d6, that seems sensible, expecting him to recapture with the pawn here. Then I'd like to play knight b4, but then rook b8 would be really irritating. So, do I have a really good move here? Nothing that jumps out at me. Just going to develop a rook to an open file. I still think I'm a couple... I'm more than a couple of moves away from being mated on the king's side. So I don't want to go into full panic mode over on the king's side just yet. His rook's looking to force back my queen. Uh, I'm going to friend, uh, offer a friendly swap of queens. Uh, I'm fairly certain my opponent won't be interested in that. Um, and given this isn't the 1500 to 2000 show, I'm not committing myself to uh, keeping the queens on in every game. Uh, you know, I, I will still attempt to play uh, aggressive and entertaining chess, um, but uh, keeping the queens on in every game is very difficult. Ooh, uh, what to do now? I really want to carry on attacking, but maybe knight back to e2 is a sensible defensive idea. And then I can bring in a rook to c7, perhaps, and look to lessen the pressure a little bit there. Okay. Uh, possible ideas for my opponent involve trying to go h4 and then g3. And again, immediately as soon as I say that, that is indeed what Amit goes for. Rook c7, g3, bishop e1 uh, is okay, I think. We're going to give it a go. We're going to give it a go. And uh, it's worth going back to an earlier moment in this game that uh, I was mentioning the fact this is like a king's engine but without the light squared bishop. And that really takes away some of the power from black's attack. Although, having said that, my opponent's last move is a very, very dangerous one. H3 strikes at the heart of my king's side. And I am a little bit concerned now. Maybe more than a little bit concerned about my king side. I said I was quite a few moves from being mated. That has just been slashed into not very many. Uh, we're going to go for a counter attack here. This might get a little bit weird, but bear with me. He's going to play h takes g2. I'm pretty much sure about that. I mean, unless he wants to flick in something like rook b8, but I don't think he's going to do that. He'll play hg2. I'll go rook f7. Queen takes and then rook c7. This is where we see the extra little bit of amount of time really kicking in. Normally at this stage we'd be uh, down to like 10, 20 seconds left. And there'd be no time for this little bit of calculation. But we have that luxury of just a little bit more time to consider. And is that going to be, uh, be my undoing here? One other line here is hg2, king g2, g takes f3, king takes f3. When I don't actually see an immediate win for black. But do I really feel comfortable with my king on f3? The simple answer is no, and the elongated, elongated answer is more like, definitely not, that looks very scary. So I think after hg2 I'm going to try this counter-attacking idea with rook f7, rook c7. But, okay, so he takes on c7 first, and now is he going to take on g2? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Now queen b7? Oh, this looks like an idea. The idea is now gf3, rook g7, queen g7, queen a8, check. But maybe he can go rook e8 here and carry on defending. Yeah, rook e8 is what he plays. Knight back to e1, or maybe just king g2, king g2, gf. I think I might be committed into this slightly risky king manoeuvre. Uh... What could possibly go wrong? 
I mean, I'm even looking at lines like takes, king takes, knight takes e4, king takes e4, f3, and then, and then I don't even know what. But it doesn't seem to be immediate mate. I mean, what could possibly go wrong with the king on e4? Uh, I have caught up on the cock. And uh, despite the amount of time we had earlier on, we are going to be going down to... Ooh, no, it's gone back to e7. Scrap that thought for the time being. Uh, defend somewhere? How do we defend? How does defending work, guys? Anyone? Uh, all right. We're gonna we're gonna play a move or two. Let's defend e4. I'm worried about takes and queen f7. I think I'm gonna have to run for the hills, guys. Run, run, run away. Queen h5 check. King d2. You can run, but you can't hide. But maybe I can buy myself just enough time. Uh, for those of you who are counting pawns, firstly, stop doing that, and secondly, I'm a pawn up. Um, more importantly, you should be counting the time on the clock. He defends the knight. Uh, something, something moves. Let's run away with the king again. That must be the right decision. Uh, this is going to be a tense finale, I suspect. Uh, take another pawn. Pick another pocket or two. Um... Maybe this A pawn will win me the game. Uh, miracles do happen. But for the time being, again, I'm not getting mated. Uh, that is pretty much all I can say about my possession. But maybe that is all I need. Let us bring the queen to some defensive square. No, I'm worried about F3 and bishop H6 check. Queen comes into F3 instead. Okay. Panic, panic, and defend the pawn on E4. Knight G4, I still have everything covered. I still have everything covered. I'm going to push this A pawn. And basically, right now, I'm sticking my fingers in my ears saying, la, 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 you're not mating me. And uh, and kind of hoping that that turns out to be correct. He takes H2. I push a pawn. Knight F1 check, King C2. It's like, yep, you're still not mating me. Where's the mate? I don't see the mate. He's down to less than 10 seconds. But he gives a check. And now, now something is happening. Something is definitely happening here. Okay, I need to go knight back to c1 to cover e2. He attacks that again. Uh, okay, we're going to push this pawn. And then bring the queen back. Panic stations here, guys. Am I about to get mated? Queen back to e3. Oh, no, wait, he's just winning. Oh, well, that's easy. For some reason, I thought I'd got that covered. Uh, well, he's an extra queen up here, so I'm going to resign. Just going back a moment there. Just going to say good game to my opponent. Wonder if there was a better defensive move. Um, maybe I was better off going a four, a seven, and giving up the piece. But yeah, I kind of missed queen f one. Hitting the rook on there and supporting the pawn going through. Alright, so uh, Amit does take the first game. Oh, uh, not going to lie, I was really hoping that I might be able to uh, to win that first one. Because uh, Amit's a little bit higher rated than me at almost all time disciplines. So um, things are relatively close, but uh, he still has that edge, I have to feel. So let us see what happens going into game two. He's just saying in the chat, yeah, I thought it was good for me after G4, but it was in a bit of trouble after that. So basically neither of us had any clue what was going on, but uh, you already knew that. So pawn to D4. Uh, I'm going to experiment with this knight to F6 move where I daringly leave the pawn on F7 for at least a couple of moves. And my opponent replies with a Trompovsky. Well, this is, uh, this is interesting. Again, I feel that we're probably in relatively unfamiliar waters for both of us, but that is perfect. Nothing like uh, an unfamiliar position to uh, let a little bit of the creative juices start flowing. What is going to happen here? Well, we're just going to develop some pieces. 
maybe take things a little bit easy at the start of this game after something like complete chaos early on there. I was wondering if my opponent was going to castle on the queen side, but obviously he hasn't done that. Let's put the rook on c8. Uh, feels like white has played quite conservatively early on here, but perhaps with a well-timed e4, he gets some slight edge. So I'm going to go d6, ready to meet that with e5 at some moment. Given the last game, uh, the, cre uh, the decisive moment still did happen in the time pressure. Um, it's worth... Um, it's worth trying to keep a lead on the clock early on. Now, what's my plan here? Do I go e5? Uh, I think I'm going to have to at some point. So I'm gonna gonna stop delaying the the decision and simply play it straight away. I mean, I was wondering about moves like c takes d4, e takes d4, knight d5, or knight h5, but I was a bit worried that queen e4 would be irritating with potential mating threats on h7. So simply gonna sidestep all of that and ask my opponent what he's gonna do here. He takes on e5. Now I have two possible recaptures. Uh, knight takes I quite like because it opens up this long diagonal, so don't see any reason for lots of calculation. One line I'm not a big fan of here for black is maybe if he takes, followed by bishop f5, and then a rook to d1. It feels just a tiny bit uncomfortable. Uh, I couldn't interpose with queen d5, unfortunately, because of e4. Bishop f6 is an interesting decision. Is he, He's going to play bishop e4 and play this very positionally. Well, this is interesting. His idea is he's swapping off my um, light squared bishop, and then he's going to put his pawns on the light squares and argue that this bishop on f6 is just a poor piece. But okay, interesting he goes queen f3. He's trying to force me to swap queens off. I'm not interested. He's going to play c4 here. Mm, and... Is it possible that I've been slightly tricked here? I don't know. Uh, bishop d5, I think maybe I can meet with a well-timed e4. But definitely feeling under some pressure here. Uh, I'd like to be able to get f5 in. Ooh, knight's coming into d5. That could be bad news. We're sim. Ooh. There are some potentially really unpleasant lines here. For example, knight c3, he's going to play basically immediately. And then he has an idea of knight d5, bishop takes. And even before recapturing, he could play queen f5. Queen e2 surprises me. That seems more slow than was necessary. Maybe I'm simply overlooking something in these lines. But, uh... Okay, gonna sidestep this. Didn't want to deal with f5, bishop d5, and the knight would be just a very, very strong piece. Oh, okay, his point was that I was threatening the pawn on c4. Uh, I really don't want to swap these bishops off on that square. But this is becoming more and more difficult. Uh, for me to get counterplay. Whereas the first game was chaos, almost from the word go, uh, my opponents had a measure of control in this game, which I find very uncomfortable. So I think I am going to release that kind of uh, pressure by playing f5 here. Now that's not going to solve any of my positional difficulties, but... Maybe I can change the nature of the game. Because if it carries on the way it's been carrying on, then I feel like I'm simply going to get outplayed here. Uh, so I'm kind of expecting maybe this bishop to try moving away. Because ultimately he wants his knight to be on d5, not his bishop. But his bishop's kind of short on squares. For example, if he puts the bishop on f3, then f5, e4 is irritating. Knight b5... Uh, okay, so a6, knight a7 is the idea here. Is that something I'm really worried about? 
Yes. Yes, it is. Let's go queen b8 to sidestep it. My opponent just underlining the control, but maybe I'll go e4 if he lets me here. Feel like I'm I'm still worse, but I'm holding things together. Um, but I'm waiting to see what my opponent's idea is here. So far, he's had a lot of control. Bishop into c6. So now a6, the knight will go back to c3. It's time to play e4. Absolutely have to play this at some point. Now at least my bishop has the f6 square. My queen has the e5 square. Rook comes into d7. No big surprises there. I'm happy to let a pawn go here, I think. For counterplay. Is he going to play knight a7 here? Possibly. But then I have bishop f5. And maybe we can make something happen? I don't know. I'd also have rook d7 followed by bishop f5, rook b7, queen e5. I don't know. That's not really counterplay, is it? I mean, maybe it is. I think I would go for it, actually. It certainly looks like more counterplay than I've seen in the last few moments. We've used up approximately half of our time here. Uh, again, it feels like Amit is just trying to make sure he limits my counterplay. Knight into d6, is that dangerous? Well, I can take on d7. Uh, what about rook takes d8? No, I don't think he's going to play that. Queen g4. Now, that cuts out uh, any idea of me playing bishop f5. a6 or queen e5? Queen e5 takes... Queen e5, he can take twice and play queen c8. Queen e5 takes, bishop takes. That feels like the line to me. Okay, we're going to try and hold things together this way. And pre-move, bishop takes d8. No, okay, we don't need to pre-move it. We've still got a minute 56. Knight d6, however, could be worrying. It's okay, I can still play bishop to g6 and hold f7. Nothing's immediately going wrong. So my opponent plays that. Bishop f5, rook f8, rook d8, takes, takes. We've got to play this move. And then we take. And he's going to take again. And play queen d1, I think, here. So, still I've been holding on, but no more than that. Queen d1, bishop f6, knight d5, maybe I get the king off the back rank with king h7. Or even queen takes something there. That move is irritating. Wow, that move is irritating. Um... Queen e6, bishop d5, queen f6, knight d5. Maybe king g8 is my only option here. Bishop d5, queen f6. Feels like there should be a move that holds everything together here, but I don't see it. Queen f6. Queen f6, knight d5, queen c6, and if bishop d5, bishop g6, and if bishop e4, I can take twice and take on b2. Oh, it's hanging together by a thread, but is the thread hanging together? I don't know. Down to less than a minute, plus the two seconds of move. My opponent has a minute 15. Bishop d5, bishop g6 is what we see. Queen g4 now. <sighs> Qu 
Queen e5, Queen d6, Queen e7. I don't know. Think I finally dropped a pawn here, guys. I maybe there was a way to save it, but I, I just couldn't make it work. Just left me in a very uncomfortable ending. It's kind of a logical conclusion to the way this game has gone, and I have a bad feeling that uh, it's going to be very difficult to seek counterplay here, especially if that knight gets to d5. So I'm trying to rush the bishop to f6. But his king is also going to be ridiculously safe on um, g2. Seeking tricks quickly. Ah, oh, okay, this is going to just be a win, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's a fairly, fairly trivial win from here. My opponent's just gaining a little bit of time with a couple of checks, but taking on g6 should be comfortable enough here. It's been a very, very smooth performance from Amit. In game number two of this mini series, uh, which will wrap up the overall victory in the mini match, but um, I will still try for a little bit of pride and honour in game number three. Uh, oh, he does decide to uh, greedily hang on to all of his pawns here, but really, I think it makes next to no difference here. He just has to keep a, a vague eye out for Queen B1, Queen E4 check ideas. But really it would take uh, a big mishandling of the position uh, for my opponent not to win this here. Queen D5 covers all of the checks uh, along this diagonal. Uh, might as well try and hold these pawns together. But even a simple plan of E4, E5 should get the win here. Just attempting to trick my opponent, somehow get him a little bit low on the clock, but uh, will it all be in vain? A5 looks to be the final nail in the coffin. We can go, we'll try a couple more moves here guys, but uh, okay, A6, and that is it. The pawn is going through, the aliens have landed, and uh, that is 2-0. So yeah, final game. Uh, I won't be able to tie up the series here, but uh, maybe I'll be able to do something to drag the score back. Yeah. My opponent says last one. Yeah. And let's see what we get here. D4, knight, f6, e3. Going to try bishop g5 here. See if I can catch my opponent off guard somehow. One of the ideas is to play a quick e4 in this system, and um, followed by bishop d3, queen e2, and there's a little bit of flexibility about what side white should castle. Uh, my opponent's responded very aggressively with this g5, knight h5 idea. So he does grab himself the two bishops at an early stage. Wonder if that means he'll be castling queen side. I don't know, he can still castle king side in these lines. Going to try and dissuade him from doing that by playing a4. Um, how do we follow up in these kind of positions? Feels like we need to uh, find a plan in the near future. Or risk flailing about in the middle game. Well, let's just go queen e2 and flail about for a little bit longer. Play knight c4 and keep a little bit of flexibility about where my pieces are going. I have a cheap threat of bishop takes d6, but I don't expect my opponent to fall for that. Queen e7 is a very natural move that do deals with that cheapo, and knight takes g3 also uh, fits the bill in that regard. But I kind of feel my opponent would be a little bit reluctant to play that. Maybe queen e7, knight f d2, knight takes g3, h takes g3 as a logical way for this game to continue. And then it's a little bit uncomfortable for my opponent's castle on either side of the board. But the same could almost be said for white. So, okay, maybe that's how the game is going to continue. Expecting knight g3, h g3 here. 
Knight F4 is an alternative option. But, uh, yeah. He concretely follows up with d5 straight away. Takes, pawn takes, knight e3. Looks okay to me. Bishop takes, knight e3. Bishop b7. Uh, time to castle one way or the other. A5, B5. Castles king side, castles queen side. So many interesting moves to play. Uh, gonna castle queen side. Managing to establish a little bit more of an imbalance again in this game. One interesting point is that if he castles either side, I do have options of knight F5 floating around here. Wonder if I should go rook d1 just to emphasize all of that right now. Kind of looks sensible to me actually. Getting ready to take advantage of this half open e file. Not even certain what my opponent can do about that threat. Uh, he can obviously move the queen so that knight f5 isn't coming to tempo. So maybe something like queen d7 hitting a4 and then knight f5, bishop f8. And then queen e5 looks dangerous. Yeah, that feels like an attack of sorts. There's also queen d7. Ooh. Bishop f8 straight away. Knight f5, queen d8. Is that really what my opponent wants to hang his position on? And no, I'm a complete believer in that. Queen d7, queen e5 I like. Queen d8. Oh wait, he had that move. Uh, I spotted that. Um, yeah, the game continues. Uh, everything's completely under control of course here guys. Um, bear with me whether or while I just work out whether everything is under control. Uh... I wouldn't mind after this game, I'm probably going to go back to this moment. Because I kind of feel like uh, I had a good position. I'm not saying that I don't have a good position now, but um, I did just overlook the fact that it was relatively safe for him to capture that. Now I'm expecting him to play f4 after I capture back. So I haven't done anything silly like throw away a piece. And maybe I'm even coming out a pawn ahead after queen g4 check. Queen d7, queen f4, or king there, queen f4. 4, 6, 2, 5, extra pawn. My opponent has the two bishops, and I kind of want that pawn back on um, a2 now. I could go queen f1, but then king a7. Um... Rook f1, queen f3, g4. Ooh, moves look kind of sensible, but not feeling them. Queen there, king a7, knight e5. Bishop g7, knight e3. Okay, we're going to pretend this is a line and that we've calculated it all out. Times are basically exactly the same, 254 each. Expecting bishop to g7 here, completing development. Knight e3. Queen d7 maybe. Bishop c2, defending the pawn. Uh, rook g3 is a little bit more aggressive though. Knight e5 allows f6, so we're not going to be getting involved with that. Simply going to retreat back. Queen g5 check, king, king b1. Rook g2, queen f7 is a line and a series of moves but uh they might be a sensible series of move and a plausible line um how are we doing here how are we doing
I'm kind of really expecting queen g5. The only alternative I really see is bishop to g7 to stop the knight jumping into e5 here, but perhaps Amit is considering a third option here. Queen g5, king b1, rook g2. Okay, he goes f6 first. He wants to keep the pressure up on g2. Seems fair enough. Also stops my knight coming into e5. Very, very logical. I don't really want to just go rook g1. But do I have a choice? Do I have a choice? Uh, rook e2 feels uncomfortable. Rook h2 feels uncomfortable. Why do I have nothing but uncomfortable moves here? Let's play rook e2. On the plus side I have this extra pawn. But I would be very, very hard pressed to say I preferred my position here. He's simply planning to treble up. Queen c1. No, not queen c1. Maybe queen c1. Rook g2. Rook g2, queen takes, queen h6. Okay. Kind of taking a bit of a gamble. No, no, rook g2 takes queen takes queen h6. e4 is on pre. However, I can try and again pretend I intended it with knight e3 or something. But doesn't feel right. Rook g2, queen g5, rook g5, rook h6. Yeah, no, that was my intention. Uh, I was kind of vaguely aware of it in my defense. wonder what he's going to play here. Maybe queen c1 was a good move for all the wrong reasons, as they say. h5. I can still take that off if I want to. I can also play knight e3. Rook g8, knight f3. f5, sorry. Yeah, okay, I like that. Still things are holding together. Bishop c8 maybe to stop the knight coming into f5. Does the knight do anything on d5 after that? I don't know. I don't know. Bishop f4 he's going to play, I'm fairly certain. Oh. He can simply take the pawn. How do we handle this? Well, there goes the extra pawn. Ooh. Takes an e5. And then takes twice. Bishop c5, e6. Feels like it's going wrong. Queen g5, rook g5, knight d6, rook takes... Okay, let's try this line. And going off for the isolated h-pawn. Feels like this is kind of leveled out. Am I picking up a pawn now? Rook e6, d5, rook e5 holds it together. Ah, uh, feels very level. Could be burning out to a draw here. Maybe rook e6, rook h4. Followed by attempting to bring the king up. Rook e6, rook h4, rook g4. Takes, takes, rook e1. Yeah, I don't like it. I think I'm going to try taking on h5 if he plays rook e6. Do have a lead on the clock, though. That could possibly count for something. Uh, I imagine he's going to take on e4 straight away. And then, do I want both rooks on the board? Uh, I think so. This could get messy, guys. I want to put the rook on f7 where it's most active. Hitting f6 and c7. Getting ready to double on the 7th rank. Rook goes across to c6. d5 is not a good move. Uh, so we bring the king up. Maybe to b3. 
Okay, yeah. Trying to hold this together. Maybe double rooks on the F file if I get a chance. Do have a slight... A uh, little bit more control here than my opponent, perhaps. Trying to go rook f8, rook h8. Catch my opponent's king and I'm mating that. Uh, don't know how that's going to work out. Rook h8, king c6, rook a8, king d5. Just going to keep some tension here. Maybe threaten d5, d6. Oh, I also got a, a nice set of rook d6 in some positions. Does that perhaps work here? d5. And d6 takes rook takes. My opponent down to very little time here. This feels like... Maybe I've got it. And rook c6, king b7, rook b6 check. This surely should be a win. b3 and c4 is going to help me a lot here. Got connected past pawns all of a sudden. Uh, just want to stop the pawn from advancing too much further, so I'm going to bring the rook back to b3. And this should be all over. Bar the shouting. Takes d7. Nah, I don't really need to do that. Let's just keep it nice and simple here. d7, rook d3, king c7. That should be that. And yeah, we do manage to save it as a 2-1. As a